Watch Budget 2018 with Bloomberg Quint. Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. Joining me on the show is Agam Vakil. Agam will speak about the FNOQs. I'll talk about the general trade setup. And, and it looks extremely strong at this point of time. Global queues are supporting. The SCX Nifty is indicating a gap up opening uh, at record high. So a 63 point gap up opening is something that we can anticipate. Plus, you know, we were closed on Friday. The market, the SCX Nifty was not in on Friday. The SCX Nifty was up almost uh, six points. So another close to 70 point uptick is something that we can expect on the nifty on opening today uh, global queues were extremely strong and so were the adr queues so most of the adr in fact all the adrs ended with a positive bias hdfc bank was the top performer which was up almost over two percent now as far as you know uh, the others also gained significantly uh, icici bank was up almost one percent infosys and vedanta also managed to gain as far as the commodity queues are concerned crude is managing to hold above the 70 dollar barrel per mark even uh, the last few days have been rather muted for crude but still it's managing to hold on as far as metals are concerned uh, mixed closing on the lme because what happened was aluminium there was zinc and there was tin, which was up almost a 1%. Uh, and what didn't do well was copper, nickel, as well as lead. They were down in trade. Uh, as far as uh, copper, comics copper is concerned, that's trading with a positive bias up close to 1% currently. Uh, in China currently, there seems to be a lot of traction, especially as far as zinc is concerned. Zinc is trading almost up close to 4%. So there is enough traction. The other commodities are rather muted in trade. Uh, gold is trading muted, gold, silver, platinum and palladium, all the precious metals, they are trading very, very range bound in today's trade. Uh, flows, FIs were net buyers yesterday, on, on Thursday in fact, they bought in almost uh, close to 1000 crores in the cash market. A similar amount was sold by the DIIs, but if you're looking at the month to date, 11,200 crores of net buying by FIs this month. DIIs with a sell figure on Thursday turned net sellers for the month itself. Uh, the Nifty was rather muted. It ended with a negative bias, was down almost uh, 16 points. But certain sectors were in focus. Metal for one was up almost or close to 1%. What didn't do well was the Nifty PSU Bank Index, which was down almost 5%, and the Nifty Auto Index, which was down 1%. But Agam, uh, it's a new series. Uh, what are the FNOQs indicating? Uh, well, Darshan, uh, we are looking at a little more put writing as we saw on, on last Thursday. Uh, with respect to futures, again, accumulation uh, across series, as considering we are looking at a new series now, is the same for the Nifty Bank futures as well, where we have seen a substantial increase in open interest. Uh, and moving in as far as your India volatility index is concerned, again, that's come off to a certain extent uh, from the mark of 18 to around 17.5. And uh, moving in, we're also looking at a fall in the put call ratio at around 1.42 as against 1.8, uh, you know, previously. Uh, moving in, uh, in terms of stocks, uh, we're, we're keeping an eye on something like an NIT tech, uh, which has seen a near 80% increase in open interest. So longs building up there, and Adani Enterprise also seeing substantial longs. But once again, all eyes will remain on the nifty, whether or not we can see the nifty move to higher levels, uh, lifetime levels, and uh, sustain and remain there. Talk of the day is Kukoyo Camelin. Good set of numbers coming in from the company. If you look at the revenue, that's a 13% growth that we're looking in for this counter at a number of 143.5 crore as compared to nearly 127 crore that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. The company has reported a net profit of 5 crore as compared to a loss of 3 crore in the December quarter of the previous year. It's a multifold jump in the operating performance for this company. The numbers have come in at 13 odd crore as compared to 1.3 crore in the December quarter. Margins of expanded to 7% as compared to 1.6% that we've seen in the previous quarter. What has led to good set of numbers? 
uh, well, the decline in the raw material expenses along with your high revenue varied the margins of the company. Raw material as a percent to your net sales, that number has come down to 56% as compared to 62% that we've seen uh, in the previous quarter. Other expenses too have come down to 20% of your overall net sales as compared to 24% earlier. Uh, the finance cost for this company, that too has come down nearly down by 28% on your on year basis which has aided the bottom line performance of the company. However, the decline in uh, the other uh, other income has what is ate into partially some gains that we've seen on operating level of the company. Well, uh, notably, Vijay Kedia has bought in 1.1% stake in this counter as per the December shareholding pattern. And if you look at the st uh, stake holding, 75% uh, stake has been held by the promoters, while 25% has been held by public. Uh, that's that in terms of the stock of the day. Let's toss it over to Saloni and Jayesh for rupee and commodity market update. Thanks for that, Nikki. Let me start off with oil prices because that is where we are seeing some traction. In fact, oil uh, as an entity is uh, sitting at a three-year high, uh, propelled by the dollar index, which has resumed its decline and trading below the 90 mark. Now, uh, you know, the hedge funds have also boosted their net bullish positions on oil prices to a record high and backed by this bank of america says that uh, brent crude can be capped at nearly 80 per barrel and jp morgan too has raised their first half target for oil prices uh, and revised it upwards to about uh, 78 dollars per barrel as per uh, as far as uh, the base metals are concerned we saw mixed tra mixed cues coming in from the london metal exchange so you had aluminium zinc and tin which closed positive while we had uh, copper lead and nickel that closed negative in trade. Uh, in fact, Nikhil did post its biggest weekly gain since the month of November. Now, if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, uh, we are seeing mixed queues over there as well. Except for zinc, which has out, uh, which has been outperforming the other base metals, it's up about uh, four odd percent. And as far as uh, precious metals are concerned, gold futures have uh, you know traded above the 1350 per ounce mark comfortably now, uh, once again boosted by the dollar index below the 90 mark for four days in a row. Uh, with that, uh, Saloni Dhanuka joins us uh, to give us a rupee market update. Uh, so Jayesh, talking about rupee, it was uh, down for the second straight week, uh, down about 21 paise against the dollar or three tenths of a percent lower. So meanwhile, rally in India's foreign exchange reserves continued for the fourth week in a row and it touched a record high mark of 414.8 billion dollar for the week uh, uh, for the week ended 19 January. On the global front, Asian currencies were trading higher last week uh, on the back of broad-based dollar weakness after US Treasury Secretary supported the view of a weaker dollar to boost countries export uh, for the week dollar index was down over one and a half percent it's a largest decline percentage decline since june 2017 elsewhere pound extended gains above 1.41 dollar mark uh, after uk gdp showed that the economy grew at a faster pace than expected well coming back home dollar rupee is trading at 63.59 levels against the dollar which indicates a flat to weaker opening for indian rupee in today's trade moving on to debt market Sovereign bonds declined for the third week, uh, while yields on the new 10-year benchmark security rose one basis point. However, particularly on Thursday, yields were up for three basis point. And lastly, global funds increased their rupee debt holding on Thursday. They infused close to 900 crore, according to NSDL data. Well, aside of um, stocks which reported earnings post market hours on Thursday, we're also tracking names like FTC Limited, where uh, the company has got a GMP approval from the UK drug regulator, that is UK MHRA, uh, for its ophthalmic manufacturing facility in Aurangabad. So we may see some positive reaction on that counter. That part, we're also looking at Pratap Snacks, where the company has signed a new pack for a third party. Um, manufacturing uh, contract of potato chips at three places so you might see some reaction on that counter that apart Havels India has said that they will set up a new facility uh, for consumer durables in Rajasthan and that will be with an investment of 360 crores uh, that apart we're also looking for Amritanjan uh, healthcare where the company will consider a stock split on 13th February we're also watching out uh, for Hindustan Cooper which will consider fundraising via QIP 
the issue and we're also looking out for uh, FM Industries where the company has updated that its plant and machinery were damaged in the fire incident at its Hosur unit. You also have a PTI report which says that JSW may double its bid for Bhushan Steel to 30,000 crores. Now remember the uh, bid uh, deadlines were extended for Bhushan Steel and Bhushan Power both so you could see some positive reaction on Bhushan Steel and lastly on the back of a surprise bulk deal on Thursday we saw Vakrangi buy 0.5% stake in PC Jeweler so keep an eye out on all these names. Galaxy Surfactants is the, uh, is, the, is the IPO that opens today in 2018. This is the fourth IPO that has come out and this is so far the biggest IPO of 2018. Now the company is looking to raise as much as 937 crore rupees at a price band of 1470 and 1480. And at the upper end of the price band that is 1480, the company will be valued at more than 5200 crore rupees. Now if you see the uh, IPO is an offer for sale where the promoters uh, will be selling shares worth 318 crore rupees while the public while the existing public shareholders or the investors in the company will be selling shares worth 619 crore rupees now if you see galaxy surfactants is a uh, manufacturer of surfactants and specialty ingredients surfactants is used as a raw material in personal hygiene and sanitation products while specialty ingredients is used as a raw material in sunscreen fairness screen and other per, uh, personal care products now if you see the surfactants contribute majority part to the company's revenue it contributes around 67 percent to its revenue while specialty products products contribute currently 33 percent and going forward they're looking to increase the share of specialty products in their revenue share because they offer higher margin to the company uh, now if you see uh, the com company sells its product in more than 70 countries and around uh, it generates around 65 percent of its revenue by uh, from overseas markets now it gets 45 percent of its revenue from Africa Middle East and Turkey and 20 percent from rest of the world while 35 percent comes in from India now the major clients of the company includes Kevin care Darber HUL Hen uh, Jyoti Lab, uh, PNG, Racket Bands, Banexa, and with the top 10 clients, the company shares a relationship of more than five years and they contribute currently 59% to the company's top line for the first half of financial year 2018. Now, the company has around seven manufacturing facilities, of which five are in India and two are in overseas markets. And the uh, capacity utilization of these seven manufacturing fa uh, facilities stood at around 62.5% for the first half of financial year 2018. Now, in India, there are there is no uh, listed pure that uh, that manufactures surfactants purely but the uh, some listed peers like Godrej Industries, India Glycols and Arthi Industries do manufacture uh, surfactants but it contributes a very small part to their revenue. Now if you see the revenue uh, financials of the comp of Galaxy, its revenue, net profit and EBITDA grew at a compounded annual growth rate of 8.4%, 24.4% and 7.5% over FI14 to FI17 and if you see the balance sheet of the company, the company has been constantly reducing its leverage ratio brought down its uh, debt to equi equity from 1.2 times in FI15 to 0.6 times in the first half of financial year 2018. Now, if you see the return ratios of the company, they are healthy. The return on equity stood at 24%, return on capital employed at 30%, and return on asset at 11.4%. Lastly, on the valuation side, uh, at the upper end of the price band, that is 1480, and on an annualized basis for FI18, the company's price to earnings stood at 35 times, market capitalization to sales at 2.2 times, EV to EBITDA at 20 times, and price to book at 8.3 times. Now let's shift focus to earnings. We have a couple of nifty companies coming out with their earnings today. We have Darshan Mehta along with Shraddha Babla and Agam Vakil to give us the details on this scene. Okay, two major nifty num numbers that will be out today, HDFC as well as Tech Mahindra. Let's start with Tech Mahindra, Agam's here. Uh, Agam, uh, Tech Mahindra, pretty much one of the large, uh, uh, large, large cap companies that will yes. come out with numbers on the yeah. IT space. Uh, what can we expect as far as the broad line numbers are concerned? Well, that's has got to be a mixed quarter if you consider sequential uh, you know, performance. We're expecting about 2% growth in its top line. Operationally, th we can expect a substantial margins expansion because of uh, well, several factors that has been playing in favor of Tech Mahindra. But when it comes to the bottom line, we are actually expecting a decline. And this is largely on account of lower other income. But uh, well, it will be another stable quarter. And I think, again, just like other other IT companies, this one will be more about the outlook 
then you know the performance itself. Okay, uh, there are some concerns about the LCC uh, LCC business of them. Right. Uh, can you uh, shed more light on that? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Darshan, o over the last couple of quarters, we've seen a lot of volatility with res respect to Lightbridge Communications. It's something that the management has continued to tell us about. Uh, you know that uh, it, it, they are carrying out several, uh, well, I should say, steps to improve business, but it's still been relatively lackluster. Comviva, on the other hand, has started picking up and showing signs of recovery so some of these uh, you know acquisitions in the in the past have not really been working out well for tech Mahindra so again we will be watching out for what uh, you know LCC has done this quarter and uh, you know the recovery in, in this business as well okay other important factors that our viewers need to watch when the numbers come out sure uh, we're watching out for uh, you know mixed expectations with respect to their enterprise business uh, we can expect communications business to pick up quite substantially as we have seen in the previous quarter as well and we'll be watching out for for uh, you know the margins outlook and of course uh, plans on re reviving the LCC. Okay, uh, just one quick question: uh, a two percent revenue top line growth is mm -hmm. something that you said. Uh, how does it uh, fit into the other schemes of you know Infosys, TCS? Uh, uh, you had Wipro and uh, you right. had HCL Tech. So where but does this two percent growth fit in? Right. So Darshan, we have seen a range of. Uh, 1% to 3.3% for HCL technologies in constant currency terms. So uh, Tech Mahindra will be very much in between all these. Okay. So these are the important numbers that we will watch out. Uh, it's, uh, but Tech Mahindra pretty much uh, will come out with results at the fag end of the trading session. But what will come out during market hours will be India's largest uh, mortgage lender and that is HDFC. Shraddha joins me. Shraddha, what are the expectations? Well, uh, Darshan, this time around the net profit jump may seem significantly higher higher. So the street is expecting a net profit growth of 168% uh, to 4,556 crores versus a number of 1,700 crores last year. And that's largely on account of the capital gains of 5,250 crores uh, that this company will report on account of the sale of its stake in HDFC, uh, Standard Life Insurance via an IPO. Having said that, they've also said that they will utilize 30% of these funds to shore up their uh, provision coverage ratio. Uh, so broadly keeping aside that one time exceptional uh, gain, uh, the quarter should be in line with the uh, uh, trends uh, that we have seen in the recent past. So spreads should remain steady around that 2.3% mark. Loan growth uh, should come in at about 15 to 16% and asset quality should remain steady. The gross NPA number in the September ended quarter was at 1.14%. So we should continue to see the gross NPA number around those levels. But having said that, it's going to be important to watch out for management commentary with respect to the mortgage demand and affordable housing and that's broadly because this was one of the areas that was identified for fund deployments. Remember they have recently raised uh, 11,000 crores from multiple investors including GIC and KKR. Uh, also watch out for the movement in spreads and margins especially on individual loans and lastly of course the asset quality on the corporate loan book. Okay many thanks for that Shraddha. So two important uh, nifty numbers. Obviously there will be a lot of uh, mid caps that will report numbers today but HDFC as well as uh, Tech Mahindra the important numbers for today. Among other stocks to watch, first off, we have uh, State Bank of India. That was down 5% in trade and saw delivery value of about uh, more than 350 crores. Uh, some bit of trading activity observed over here because the delivery volume was flattish at about 1.1 uh, crore shares as compared to its five-day average. And the total volume shot up just about 40% at 4.5 crore shares as compared to its five-day average. Union Bank of India, that too was down nearly 5% and saw delivery selling of more than 100 crores. The delivery volume was up more than 160% at about 79 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average and the total volume more than doubled at about uh, 2 crore shares as compared to its 5-day average. Bharat Forge last and final stock to watch out for that was down 3.5% and saw delivery value, uh, delivery selling of about 115 crores. The delivery volume more than doubled at about 16 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average and the total volume shot up just about 90% at about 23 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average. Now the budget session of parliament is set to begin today with an address from President Ramnath Kovin. However, all eyes will be on the government's economic survey which will be tabled in parliament at noon. 
Now, focus will be on the government's growth projections. The midterm economic survey tabled in August last year said that achieving the target of 6.75 to 7.5 percent in the current financial year will be difficult owing to a slowdown in the first half. Now, focus will also be on the trends post the introduction of the GST. Collections from the uniform tax law have uh, been on a downward uh, trend since July, although they did see a rebound last month. The midterm economic survey had also signaled considerable room for monetary policy easing. It will be interesting to note the commentary on this front amid rising inflation and an unfavorable rise in commodities, especially crude oil. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of All You Need to Know. Here's a snippet from the World Economic Forum meeting that was concluded last week. At the event in Davos, almost all participants used shuttle buses to get around. Minika Doshi took a ride on one such bus to see who she'd end up pooling with. Have a look. Well, the shuttle is the best way to get around Davos when you're here for the World Economic Forum's annual meeting, mostly because it's the only way. There are no taxis to be had in the city. Very occasionally will you find one, and the buses don't ply any of the main routes that you need to use to go from hotel to hotel or from the Congress Center to hotel and back. So the shuttle is the lifeline of every WEF delegate. So we're going to try a few lines and give you an idea of how many different people we can meet here uh, in the shuttle, which countries they come from and what their WEF has been like this year. Come travel with us. So what are the chances that the first person we bump into uh, in the shuttle uh, is one of the best known journalists, editors of our times, uh, Farid Zakaria, thank you very much for agreeing to speak with us. And what's the WEF been like for you this year? Look, I always find it fascinating because you get uh, people from all over the world. It's a genuinely global conference. For somebody interested in the world, it's like being a kid in a candy store. Uh, so I, I always enjoy it. You heard Prime Minister Modi from India? It was a positive speech. I think he was hoping to parallel President Xi's speech from last year. And I think that was more tight and more disciplined. You know, you saw the difference between, in a way, a technocrat and a politician. Mm where Prime Minister Modi is used to extemporizing a little bit more and ranging widely and freely. Um, but the, you know, the general message was, was a good one. India is open for business, in, you know, interested in an open world. I'm glad he talked about global warming because India has been one of the laggards on, on the issue. So yeah, overall positive. I'm Sumit Jamwar. I uh, run a company called Global Gene Corp. I'm from India, but okay. I live in the UK. Most important thing is around uh, meeting new people, um, and also there are conversations which are ongoing, which are uh, depend, you know, in terms of the relationship, in terms of uh, work that we are doing, uh, which is around genomics and just solving for the gene, you know, problem of not having enough insights about, for example, the Indian population and other Asian or African or Latin American population. So that's the work we focus on, uh, out of you know, Boston, Cambridge, Singapore, and India, and this is an excellent forum where you meet some world leaders, you meet some uh, people who are doing cutting edge work in technology and uh, that's where ideas start, right? Over a cup of coffee or something. I'm Stephen Fiddler, I'm a British, uh, I'm British but I work for the Wall Street Journal, American newspaper. Did anything stand out for you in this year's WEF? Uh, the chaos around the snow on the first few days. <laughs> no um, but uh, I guess uh, the, you know, there's usually um, you know a lot of talk about the economy and that kind of thing. I think the the background, there's background anxiety about even though the economy is going well, even though financial uh, markets are going very well, there's a background anxiety about what's happening in you know the world of trade, what's happening with geopolitical tensions in Asia and elsewhere, uh, and that kind of thing. So that was the thing that's mainly struck me so far. So my name is Martin Fischer. I'm uh, also a journalist from the Netherlands. Okay. I'm the biggest newspaper in the Netherlands, uh, the Telegraaf. How has the web been for you this? It's the first time, so it was your first time. It was rather confusing and overwhelming at first, especially because the first day the weather was very bad. It was not very easy to go to all the locations, mm -hmm. but it's very impressive. Um, I saw Al Gore, John Kerry, the King of Spain, the King of Belgium, <laughs> and, and you can talk to a lot of people. So it's uh, it's a lot, and uh, but it's 
Very impressive. My name is Monica Ventosa. I come from Portugal and uh, I'm here in representing the Portuguese Association of uh, Retail Companies. And what's the fun thing both you ladies are going to do here in Davos? Great Portuguese wine. We can show we you believe. one. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, what do you know? A bottle of wine in the channel. <laughs> you know. oh, great. The, the wine that have been offered to us to promote very good uh, wine producers that we have in our country. Excellent. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. Yes, it is. And it's produced in a region and nearby Lisbon. that name? Can you pronounce that name for me? Yes, it's Quinta. Quinta? The Bacalua. The Bacalua. My name is Aziz Zabso. You're from Turkey? Yeah. Is this your first wear for your... Not really. I'm probably one of the seniors here. I'm oh. over 25, <laughs> six times now. Do you have a Davos moment from the 23, 24 years that you've been here? <laughs> well, you just asked the gentleman about someone who met. I went to the Microsoft's. Uh, Bill Gates? Bill Gates. In a shuttle? Uh, in a very interesting, not in a shuttle, actually in the toilet. In the toilet. <laughs> well, you know. It was just, just beside me and I thought, I know this face from somewhere. <laughs> I looked again and it was him. So uh, you feel that they are human beings like you and me <laughs> and that's good. Well, have you had a Davos moment yet? And that usually is when you bump into someone you least expect it to. Uh, <laughs> mine was when I remember seeing Tony Blair like three inches yeah, away yeah, from yeah. me. Yeah, I, I had yours? A I was talking to Kate Rayworth, that's a well-known British economist, about your book. I interviewed her uh, last, uh, lastly, and behind me I saw, oh, there's El Gore going, oh no, uh, and, uh, and and some other guys and uh, uh, all all the, all the hot shots. Your best Davos moment. And I've been. This is, I think, my 22nd year of coming to Davos. Years, so I don't okay. know that. Your best a, one in the last five years. Best, that's that's best the best Davos way to narrow moment. it. Uh, oh God, having dinner with Bill Gates. So we started this with Farid Zakaria, a famous journalist. We met another one from Britain. Uh, we met a retail delegation from Portugal, a retailer from Turkey, uh, briefly someone from Ramallah. Um, so that was, and, and of course, how to forget, uh, the gentleman from Netherlands. Uh, that's a sh small slice of what it's like to travel around in the shuttle here in Davos. Different people, different experiences, and great fun sometimes, unless you're in a hurry to get to your next spot, in which case the travel traffic here in Davos can be legendary. All right, I'm going to sign out now. Thanks very much for watching. Stay with Bloomberg Quint.